It's a big night in Oklahoma City for game two of our championship series. Oklahoma has to win it to stay in it. With UCLA, a victory away from taking home the national championship trophy. A flicker of hope. The message to the team was we don't quit. That's not in our DNA. A spark of emotion. You gotta let it go. Can't go back and change the games. They aren't discouraged. They're not crying in the locker room. A burning desire. We're going to fight for survival. In a combustible moment. Aaliyah coming out and giving the first punch. Put us in a position to really open up the floodgates to play UCLA softball. We're just gonna come out, fight, and give it our all. Back to the fence, and Shay Knighton goes yard! We have two games left, so that we're not out of anything. We've worked all season for this moment. Here's the drill. The Sooners, they have to win it to force game three. Otherwise, it's UCLA taking home their 12th NCAA title. That is by far the most in the history of the sport. And we welcome you to Hall of Fame Stadium. I'm Beth Mowens, Jessica Mendoza, Michelle Smith. We've got a couple of Olympic gold medalists up here. We've got Holly Rowe on the field for us tonight. And we're all still talking about what a stunning development it was last night. The biggest win in champ series history for UCLA. So what do we think is going to happen tonight? Well, I think what last night showed me is, and what we know, is how much adrenaline, Beth, it kicks up a whole nother notch and how you'll see both sides that one with offensive explosions and also with defensive nightmares and errors. Adrenaline is a crazy thing. Yeah, and it also shows how much this game can just change. One error can just open up the floodgates, and but both these teams need to forget about yesterday. It doesn't matter if you won by 16 or if you lost by 16. You've got to come out today and perform. And it was an historic night for UCLA. All kinds of records set and broken. Everybody on the roster got in on the act. It was game one damage done for the Bruins. Well, the Bruins were just offensively minded from the very start. Their control up at the plate was outstanding. They had 16 hits on the evening off four different Oklahoma pitchers, but it was really the four big home runs. Aaliyah Jordan got it going with the solo shot. Rachel Garcia got involved as well just a display of power, of hitting for average, of capitalizing on four Oklahoma errors. This UCLA team, you could tell yesterday, did not want to be denied. They have done it all year long. Look at those 16 runs. That is just epic in a champ series. But the fact that they have to come back today, they need to think about what they can do, get back on the board. They use all different players. Those four runs, home runs outstanding. They've done a lot of damage with the long ball, but they also showed yesterday that they can hit for average as well. Very impressive for the Bruins. So now it's on to OU. And Jess, I think Patty Gasso said it best post game last night. Yes. They cleaned our clocks. <laughs> this did not look anything yeah. like the Oklahoma team we're used to seeing here. You nailed the best because this was an outlier of what this team is. And you think about, first of all, the senior class that leads this team, what they've done all season long. But most importantly, last night, 13 runs in that game. Well, it's the worst loss since Patty Gasso's first year in 1995. This is not what Oklahoma is about. Not only the team this year, but the team historically. This senior class has led this team from freshmen to back-to-back -to -back national championships in 16 and then followed up in 17. They know how to win in Oklahoma City. This is the reminder that they had last night as they go home, losing by 13, the worst loss since 95. They talk about what they've done on this field. And more importantly, what have they done as a team all season long? They were number one for a reason. And guys, they are going to show how good they are again tonight. Well, UCLA enjoyed the route last night. Does an even bigger celebration away. Or can OU win its third elimination game of the postseason to force game three? We're playing on the biggest stage possible, and uh, we're still staying positive. We're going to come out and fight. This team competes, and we, loved, we love our backs against the wall. I have so much confidence in every person on this team. We've worked all season for this moment, so to be one step closer feels amazing. Got to bring it home for, for UCLA.
look at our Capital One starting lineups. And the top seed will be the visitor here in game two. And it's really going to have to come from the two right at the top. It's been a quiet World Series so far for the All-Americans, Romero and Clifton. Can they change that tonight and be the fire starter for OU as they get set for the second night in a row to face the new time National Player of the Year, Rachel Garcia. And here's Holly Rowe with more. Rachel Garcia for UCLA is putting together one of the most epic Women's College World Series performances we have ever seen in World Series history. Not only does she lead the tournament in wins with eight in the circle, but she also leads in RBIs produced with 18. She's doing it with her bat. She's doing it with her arm. She is doing it through much adversity that she's faced this season. Her beloved grandfather, Bob, passed away during this year. And as special as this season is, it's been very difficult. She's dedicating it to his memory and even on her visor while she's in the circle every moment, Papa is with her in her heart, fueling her and fueling this fire. Yeah, the junior out of Palmdale, California. A sparkling eight and O oh in this NCAA tournament. And she's hit three home runs and driven in those 16 RBI to lead the way for the two seed Bruins. We've got the Big 12 champs, the Pac-12 co-champs, and Oklahoma in a must-win situation. And a reminder, the team that has scored first in this entire World Series has won every game, 13-0. Sydney Romero even thinking about a bunt, drag bunt, utilizing any way to get on first base. And Romero lines one out to right center. Jordan back on the track, and Sydney will leg it out with a leadoff double. And a message sent quickly. Look at the location of this pitch. It's away. I love how her bat path, what she does to get to this pitch, because, guys, this is how they threw her all game long last night. She came in with a plan. Get on base. She does it big with a double. Another senior right behind her in a first-team All-American, Kaylee Clifton. A 400 hitter all year long, but she's below the Mendoza line at the Women's College World Series, and Sooner fans know she's due. Well, Jess, you men mentioned it, plan. There is one thing about this Oklahoma coaching staff, they were going to have a plan. I bet they didn't sleep at all just scouting and knowing what they needed to work on to give their offense to score off Garcia. And immediately, a Garcia makes an adjustment after going outside to Romero. They're coming now back inside. It's going to be a lot of zigging and zagging in this game. Bit of a chess match. Yeah. That's what we love, right, Smitty? Absolutely. I got you, you get me. I'll always get you last. That's how it works. <laughs> <laughs> Wishful thinking. <laughs> yeah, that's, all, that's what it's all about. Well, this is something that Oklahoma is going to have to improve upon to have a chance tonight against Garcia and the Bruins. And a chance right away. And, and we also get a glimpse of the growth of Garcia's game with Halstead able to call more of their own game with Lisa Fernandez this year. Bet that last pitch called for a strike. That is going to be huge for Rachel Garcia. That is a rise nice. ball at the top of the zone, maybe even out of the zone. She gets that called. Whoo! Yeah. Didn't have that last night, did she? No. She, she had it, and they took it, and it was a ball. Yes. Yes. It got that's called what I mean. It was called a ball. Yeah. 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 Well, and, and I didn't think it was as sharp last night as it was on Sunday when she struck out 16 against Washington. Last night's start is the only time in her career she had not had a strikeout in a game. Three one to Clifton. Trying to protect that inside corner. Player that just passed 
The GOAT, Lisa Fernandez, to fifth all-time in UCLA history with over 800 career strikeouts in just three seasons. And gets Clifton. One down. And that's going to be the big pitch. That is like an off-speed drop that's going to be multi-dimensional in the sense that it's going to run and it's going to drop or fall. Look at the way she's going to get over this pitch, that rotation, the way that she pulls across her body and lets it just dive down. Looks like it's coming hard and just falls out. The number three hitter, Jocelyn Allo, the three at the top for OU were just one for 10 in game one. Romero with a hit, Clifton with the strikeout, and Allo with the home run power stepping in. Comes back with that changeup, that off-speed pitch that she struck out Clifton on. A pitch we don't see a whole lot of, but if she wants to start getting swings and misses, that's something she's going to have to kick in. That will open up her rise ball. If she can throw that off-speed for a strike, Allo, terrific glove work at third by Brianna Tautalafua. And then Pack with the tag at first, two down. Tautalafua going down to her knee. Snow cones it a little bit, but I love the look. Just enough of a look to Sydney Romero. And how about Pack coming off the bag knowing that she needs to make the tag, is able to apply the tag to Allo, but this ball is scorched. Woo. That'll bring up Grace Green, one of the two freshmen in the starting lineup tonight. Her last at-bat last evening was a home run. For the Big 12 Freshman of the Year. Garcia had already left the game at that point. Rachel only needed to throw five innings and just over 60 pitches, so should be plenty fresh. <laughs> Off speed again. Yep, there's a sequence right now that's clear. It's You can tell a game plan first from a hitter's point of view, what they're planning to do. And right now for Rachel Garcia and these Bruins, their plan is to throw off speed followed by a rise ball. And there it is, two and two. And the strikeout as the Sooners go 0 for 3 with a runner in scoring position, and Garcia works out of the jam. Rachel Garcia using all parts of the zone, but she's really using this off speed effectively. Second strikeout. Here's our Capital One starting lineups for the UCLA Bruins. Four different players hit a home run last night, but we're going to go down to Kinsley, Washington who was four for four in game one with a double and three runs scored. As uh, the order from top to bottom all got in on the action last night in putting 16 runs up on the board. They saw G. Juarez for four innings and got three earned runs off of her. A spectacular regular season at 22 and 0, but she's lost twice in the last two nights. Beth, she's got to go to her off speeds. This is her best pitch. Look how dirty this pitch is. 56 miles an hour, drops off a table. What did get hit was the curve. Aliyah Jordan really got things started last night off of that pitch. It's not a bad pitch, but it plays up so much better when she utilizes that off speed. Her best pitch. And the Big 12 pitcher of the fear of the uh, year to face. Bubba Nichols at the top of this lineup. Nichols, Perez, and Jordan. The top three were six for 10 in game one last night. Each of them had a couple of hits, and Perez and Jordan had home runs. And Bubba Nichols tattoos the pitch into the left field seats. Home run, Bubba, and a one nothing lead.
just showed the curveballs what got hit out last night's another curveball it's going to ride into Bubba Nichols this is the pitch that gets hit she tried to go to the off speed but was in the dirt before it she's got to be able to get off barrel because these UCLA bats guys are red hot and Bubba Nichols starting this thing off where they left off last night with a home run that is their fifth home run now in seven innings, eight innings, excuse me, in and, this champ series. And by five different players. Mm. Uh, this, is, this is just a lineup that can do damage. One through nine. Perez gets into one. Back to back home runs to open up the game for UCLA. Perez gets all into, again, another curveball. Look at the location of this pitch. It's elevated, and it is on the white part of the plate. It just does not get away from her. This lefty-lefty matchup, Jiwara should be running that into that right-handed batter's box. And look at it just fly out of the yard. Brianna Perez, a three-run home run last night. A solo shot to back up Bubba Nichols for the Bruins. And Bubba barely caught her breath before she was running back out of the dugout. What a start for UCLA. The first two batters of the night both go deep. And when the first pitch of the game for Juarez was a changeup, I was about to say, this is that's the pitch of the night. Yeah. Both that's how you take power away. So G threw one, the next two curveballs have been hit out of the yard. 14-0 for the team that scores first. And Mariah Lopez quickly out to the bullpen. And G. Juarez in trouble early. So they met during the regular season, and UCLA won that game 7-1. to one. So add that to the two here in the champ series. Just devastating to Sooner pitchers, 25 runs. Oklahoma only gave up 61 to everybody else the rest of the year in 61 games. in this World Series, eight runs per game and two home runs per game, and they've already hit the two home runs and a 2-0 lead for Kelly Enoy Perez, the UCLA alum, who won three times as a player, 31 years at UCLA. They're trying for her second title. There's the pitch, back to back, she's thrown it now. Elliot Jordan chasing it twice. That That's the one, and it hasn't even been a strike. It's been on her ankles. And why? Because this is a hitting fest, and they're in a hitting mode right now. They want to hit everything. Don't give them anything to hit. Make them get themselves out. Well, that's why I'm surprised they didn't establish the curve as a ball. Run it down, run it away, and throw the changeup for the strike. That was a... She was lucky she got away with that curveball at 65. That was fouled back hard. The other thing, that curveball, it, it's the location of it. It's not just where it's on the plate. It's the height. It's, it's above the knees. It's right at that cookie zone, as you like to say. <laughs> yes. Oklahoma coming in hoping it was a brand new day, and UCLA saying, uh-uh, we're, we're playing through from last night. And keeping it going. Another one fouled straight back. For the most decorated program 
in the sport with the 11 NCAA titles. They have been in the finals half of the time that it has been contested, 19 of the 38 years. But this the first since their last title in 2010. And Jordan reaches and a strikeout for Juarez, one down. Let's check in with Holly. Well, guys, you talk about G. Juarez and her mix mixing pitches. Keep in mind that changeup that she will need tonight is something that she just learned in the middle of the season. She started tinkering with it about the beginning of conference play against Texas Tech. She didn't really start throwing it in games against two weeks later and Baylor. She said it was really something she struggled with at first, but Kaylani Ricketts, Delaney Gorley on the staff were helping with her, and she said, I finally got it. Learned how to keep my thumb down, pinky up. And she is going to need that pitch tonight, but it's just amazing to me that a pitch she learned mid-season is something she'll have to rely on at the World Series. That's right, Holly. It's definitely something that is new to her repertoire, but it is by far the best thing that she'll throw. She also gave a lot of credit to one of the freshman pitchers, Brooke Vestal, who actually taught her thumb up to pinky up and thumb down to, to pinky up. So just that's just talking about how you release the ball, snap it out to take that spin and speed away. She might be the next uh, star in the circle redshirting this year, but was a big help to G. And now her matchup here with Rachel Garcia. Mini, that's when you know our game is evolving. When you get a freshman pitcher that's 17, 18 years old teaching a senior yep. how to pitch something and honestly understand how to pit, pitch it herself to teach it. I mean, how many players under, understand something so well that they can teach it to someone else? It's something you hear about in the big leagues all the time. Clayton Kershaw getting there with Rich Hill in the bullpen and there's trading secrets. But to hear it at the college level tells me how much this game has grown. They've also got Kehlani Ricketts and Delaney Gorley over there on the uh, staff. A couple of former national champs. There they are. Ricketts, of course, at OU. Gorley, uh, championship at Florida. And not to mention Jen Rocha, one of the best pitch callers and pitching coaches in the game. So you some great pitching minds in that dugout. 3-2 to Garcia. And a call, strike three, two down. Run some emotion out of G. Juarez after that strikeout. It's a backdoor curveball in the outside corner to Rachel Garcia. Look at the way she gets down on that left oh. side of the line, and she brings that ball from the river to the back of the plate. Look at the speed and the rotation on this. The speed and the spin count of that ball as it's just ripping back into the strike zone. And then going back to that off speed to Taylor Pack, 0-1. There she comes. The hardest thing to do after a, a night la last night is come out and just get going and get into your mode as a pitcher, especially <laughs> you give up back-to-back -back home runs. But that's it. She's feeling it. And she's got, I'm telling you what, I've seen her pitch at Arizona State. I've seen her pitch here. She's got a little strut going on right now. She's got some, she's got some sass. She's feeling it. And you need that. You need that after giving up back-to-backs. Taylor Pack, who had a hit, who had a run batted in last night. And it is off the glove and over the Lions at short. And Taylor Pack, a two-out base runner. Romero couldn't come up with it clean. Momo checking in with us. Of course, ESPN, our NBA reporter, analyst. Do yourself a favor and catch UCLA softball in the World Series Championship. Love you, Ramona. She, of course, played at Stanford, yes. played softball there. Mm -hmm. was her teammate. Now covering the uh, championship uh, finals in the NBA. They are, by the way, going to score that an E5. So not a base hit for Pack, an error on Romero. So again, the team with the best fielding percentage in the country all year long. Four errors last night and one early tonight. And this is Brianna Taudalafua, who after an 0 for 26 stretch 
went yard last night. Well, they've moved her up in the batting order because of that, trying to put all those power hitters back to back to back to back. See how this error affects G. Wars as well. After errors like that should be out of the inning. Extra pitches she's going to have to throw. Already over 25 pitches now in this first inning, including the back-to-back -back home runs to lead off the night for Bubba Nichols and Bree Perez. And Tata Lafua with the base hit. And rolling around is Pack heavy for third. And Tata Lafua will take second right behind her. And UCLA will extend the inning. Full count, it's a curveball on the outside corner. So it's that backdoor curve that she got the strike out of Garcia on. But this one is just a little bit too high. And it just gets nailed into the outfield. That's where the error is costly. And now Colleen Sullivan will try and bring him home, the number seven hitter. Well, and honestly, it, it is the little things besides the air, a bobble at third base on that allows Tata Lafua to get in the scoring position. When you want to stop the bleeding, when you want to get out of the inning, it's those things. You want Brianna still to be at first base, not at second. And it's 2-0 to Colleen. Freshman out of Poway, California, member of the all Pac-12 rookie squad this year. She had a hit last night. Everybody got into the game. Everybody got involved. All nine spots in the lineup had a hit. Eight of the nine ended up scoring runs last night. There's a strike three and one. It's a hitter's count, three one. That's when he start drooling as a batter. This is where G. Juarez, you gotta throw below 60 miles an hour on this one. Give her the off speed, an aggressive swing. So you come out hacking as a hitter. 3-1, anything close. 3-2 is a little different. Sullivan can bust this wide open quickly. Pack at third, Tata Lafu at second. In the dirt, then the bases will be loaded for Kinsley Washington, who was four for four in game one. And ladies already 11 pitches since that error that G. Juarez has had to throw. Bases are now juice. Well, just when it looked like she had recovered from the home runs with back-to-back -back strikeouts, UCLA will not let her breathe. Washington, three singles and the run scoring double off of three different pitchers last night. For the sophomore out of Whittier, California. She has been their best hitter in this NCAA tournament. Befuddled by the off speed curve. Down 
on the line and Knighton's got it. Side retired, the bases are left loaded, but two big swats from UCLA bats. Get it going early, Bubba Nichols, followed by Bree Perez, get UCLA on the board, two zip, the top of the first. So how would the Oklahoma Sooners respond after last night's loss, the worst in program history under Patty Gasso since her very first season? Patty Gasso said the locker room was fascinating last night. She said, you know, there was not a lot of panic in this group. There were not tears in the locker room. And they arrived today when they got off the bus, they all had shirts on that said hashtag stronger together. It was a quiet, confident group of people. Not a lot of panic. They know what kind of team they are. They know what kind of players they are. And they know that last night was was just not their night. She said, I saw players make mistakes they've never made, and that's not who I expect us to be tonight. And most importantly, you'll notice she pulled G. Juarez early in that game last night. She said, I went to the circle and I said, one out of 10, how do you feel right now? She said, four. She took her out and knew that if they're gonna push this to a three game series, she would need a better G. Juarez tonight. We've seen a little bit mixed bag of that. Well, she looked pretty loose pregame, playing a little football with her team to keep them loose. Now in her 25th season with the four national championships. And they are looking for a third in four years, a fourth title in six years, but the dynasty is in jeopardy right now of being in decline. They are backs against the wall, have to win tonight to force game three. After UCLA knocked them around in game one, and now have them down two here in game two. Shay Knighton got a good swing in. Most a beautiful opposite field home run, and she's normally a pull hitter, but drove this out to right center. And this is when the score was close, and that was a huge hit for Oklahoma. Slow roller to third, title of Fula. Got her. One down. It's five, six, and seven in the lineup here. Bruins win tonight. They have the national championship to take back to Westwood. Nicole Mendez, who went 0 for 3 in game one. After enjoying the best season of her career, the junior from Texas. Had to fight for her job when the season began, and it really steeled her and toughened her up. Said iron sharpens iron. Learned a lot from having to having to fight every day to hold off Reagan Rogers. Well, in humility, you got to remember every one of these college athletes was the best player on their high school team. They were the best player on their travel ball team. They get to college, and they've never been told you might not play unless you play better. And so it humbles you, it allows you to work harder, but also gives you perspective of like, okay, what do I need to do to stay in this lineup? Huh. Patty Gasso calls it her championship mindset. We're gonna be competitive in everything we do every day in practice. And Mendez laces one out to left center and a base hit. Well, the adjustments for Oklahoma have to be made on outside pitches. Look where Sidney Romero last night. Look at that front foot and look how far they are from the away pitch. This is where they're susceptible is when they are so far from pitches and not being able to get their body into position to drive. But Nicole Mendez on this, this is a pitch up in the zone, but her lower half stays stacked on top of each other instead of committing the other way. Had a chance in the first inning. A runner in scoring position could not get Romero home. And now a base runner with one out here for Fale of you, the senior from Oceanside, California. And you'll note Fale swinging with that split grip that she's used throughout the season. Something new for her. She splits because she had such a problem with rolling over 
rolling over that knob of the bat, and this allows her to have a flat path to the ball. Washington, good range at second. Two down as Mendez moves over to second base. That'll bring up Lindsay Elam. One for two last night. That was her first hit of this Women's College World Series and her first year as the starting catcher for the Sooners. Yanks that one foul. She's not quite sure how an avid Megan Willis fan like herself, of course, Megan, a great Texas. catcher at Texas, how Lindsay ends up at OU, but said she used to love going to games, watching, seeing how the really good players get it done, tried to tailor some of that, and incorporated in her game, Tauta Lafua, the pretty spin at third base. Two runners in scoring position so far, and both stranded. Two zip, UCLA. Game two of the champ series. After a big night last night for UCLA, the Bruins have carried it over, swinging the big stick, taking home the Jolly Ranchers. Two home runs in the first four pitches they saw. And their ninth and tenth taters of this tournament. That is the third most in the history of the World Series. Their 2010 UCLA team tied with the Florida Gators a year later. And uh, uh, how can you hate Jolly Ranchers? There's a Sooner fan who disapproves, but. <laughs> <laughs> Grounded the short Lions over the first one down. Holly Rowe, what you got for us? Well, you know, Jolly Ranchers are a tradition that when you hit a home run as you round third base, you get a Jolly Rancher from Kirk Walker, the assistant coach for UCLA. This is a tradition they've done for a long time, so I made sure to check in with him pregame. He said he does have a big bag here and available so that they will not run out, but they were not great catching them last night. They missed about three of the four, and so they're doing a better job catching those Jolly Ranchers as they round the base tonight. <laughs> Got to stay focused round in that bag. You, you got to make sure you don't miss third. And then eyes up on Kirk. Yeah, but you got your screaming sisters at home plate you can't Ooh, wait to yes. reunite with. Here's Bubba Nichols, top of the order. And this is how it all started for the Bruins tonight. First pitch change up in the dirt. She lays off it. Second pitch curveball at 66 miles an hour. It's elevated and it's gone. Bubba Nichols, I like to call her Bubba Benjamins because she's money. <laughs> well, we heard Holly, you know, telling the story of Aaliyah Jordan getting extra BP in with her old travel ball coach. And Bubba used to be in the car with her and would go with her once a week after school, after practice, 10, uh, 10 o'clock till midnight. They'd drive an hour both ways. You want to talk about commitment, that's what it takes to get here. And what you're doing when nobody else is watching. And she grounds out two down. And out uh, uh, down the right field line, up into the stands. That's our seven innings podcast set. And they have uh, the seven innings live show going on right now on ESPNU. And this is available on your app on E3. Pitch by pitch, you can choose which camera angle you want to watch. That's on your ESPN app, pitch by pitch. You can and see what our director. Innings, yeah, seven innings gang on ESPNU tonight. Let's see what our director, Anthony DeMarco, looks at. And you decide at home which camera angle you'd want to look at. Bringing you more coverage of this 38th Women's College World Series. The Pac-12 has won 23 of those previous championships, but none in the last eight years. Nicole Mendez right now in center field, I mean, she is cracking me up. She is constantly asking the fans 
to get loud. She's calling people out. She's pointing to them. She's run all the way to the right field and left field to get them going. And Juarez gets the strikeout. That's the third for G. Through two. Two nothing Bruins. She's paired up with Lisa. They've worked on training, uh, you know, literally layered up so they knew it would be hot. You know, they've prepared mentally and physically to be in this type of a grind. So you saw Rachel actually enjoying it. You saw Rachel get stronger. You saw Rachel be convicted because she was prepared. So I credit both her, Lisa, and the entire pitching staff for the work they put in before preparing for this moment. And it was epic. Late 80s, early 90s, Kelly I and Lisa Fernandez, teammates at UCLA, of course, Lisa, uh, widely recognized as the greatest ever with the uh, three gold medals and a couple of titles at UCLA and now mentoring what were the, what was that sign we saw earlier the baby goat Rachel <laughs> Garcia trying to join the list of national champions for the Bruins and Holly I know you got more of the story for us well, that's right. They really wanted to work one on one so that all of the pitching staff and Lisa Fernandez would do what they call champ camp. They would come early about an hour before practice and do extra cardio, extra conditioning. Lisa Fernandez says I did everything with them because I had learned when I was at UCLA the kind of effort it took to be exceptional and to be special. She said I knew if the workouts were too easy and I could do them at my age that I wasn't pushing them hard enough. She said but they've made the commitment. If you want to be special in the circle, you have to make the commitment. That's what Rachel Garcia has done, even to the point where they won't have dessert. They are locked in on their nutrition, on their workouts. I think somebody sent strawberries, chocolate-covered strawberries to the hotel, and they wouldn't even go there because they want to be at their very best here. But I love that Lisa's getting that feedback doing the workouts herself. And she said, some days when it was really hard, I was like, okay, good. This is enough for these young women. <laughs> Facing... Nine, and then the top of the order here, Grace Lyons. And I know, Michelle, you always encourage young pitchers. You gotta throw in 100% humidity. You gotta throw when it's when it's raining out. You gotta throw when it's 40 degrees and you, you got layers on, so you're ready for those conditions when they come up in a game. Absolutely, because they will come up in a game and you need to be prepared for them. You need to be prepared if you're a hitting pitcher that you could be out running the bases and then you gotta come in and grab your glove and go back out to be able to control your heart rate, to be fit. Especially here where you might have a 10, 10 inning game and then you gotta come back and pitch the next night, which is what Rachel Garcia had to do Sunday and then last night. She threw 10 innings, 179 pitches in that 10 inning game. Hit the walk off game winner in the semis to get them here and a diving backhanded grab Bree Perez with the web gem. See you tonight on SportsCenter, Bree. That is awesome. And what I love about this as well is her positioning. Take a look right here at where she's at. Okay, so she's in that middle position, but she's gonna have to come into this five, six hole on a changeup. So she's prepared. She goes a little one step up the middle and then reacts on the changeup. This ball, gloving it and getting it. And Garcia is fired up. And that's the difference in the game right now, the defense. Both she and Chowda Lafua have had nice plays on that left side. So we've seen the error from Oklahoma, the defensive plays from UCLA. And here comes Romero. She's got one of the two hits for the Sooners, a double to lead off the game. And Beth, it was the adjustment she made last night to this night, outside pitch. Look at how far off the barrel this is. Her body, her foot plant, then tonight, she knows they're going away. So look at her be able to get her hands, her back hip towards that pitch. That was the adjustment. Now they've come in twice. So they're being careful. They knew what she was looking for. You know as a hitter what pitch you got out on, and you want to make that ad adjustment. That's what Sydney did in 24 hours. One and two here, the Pac-12 Pitcher of the Year and the Big 12 Player of the Year. Romero gets a hold of one and sends it out. Sidney Romero cuts the deficit in half.
with a message attached that said, I want to play again tomorrow night. Look at where Paige Halstead wants this pitch. She wants it off the plate, away. It leaks back over. I showed you the adjustment Romero made last night to this night. This is where she came in looking. I want outside. You got me outside last night, Rachel Garcia. You're not going to get me again today. And that's a one-two pitch. That is a massive Mitch miss by Garcia. You typically don't see that, but that's what this Oklahoma team will do. 114th home run on the year for Oklahoma. Romero family. Seven, eight years of trips to this World Series. First with older sister Sierra, the All-American of Michigan, and now with the two-time national champ, Sid. Gosh, that, that is such growth. I'm sorry, Sydney Romero, she would be pouting after last night. What we've seen from her in the past, getting down on herself, having a night where she goes 0 for 3 first. She got a, a hit at the end, but she comes back today with a game plan and she executes. And that is the difference for any softball player that's watching baseball. I don't care what sport you play. The ability to adjust in failure is so key to being able to play this game. Romero with that error in that first inning as well. Rebounding from that, it's great leadership. Home run parade continues as Clifton gets hit by the pitch. And the tying run is on for OU. The go ahead is Jocelyn Allo. Well, the road to Omaha continues this weekend. It's baseball super regionals for you Friday at noon on ESPN2. For more information on uh, the Men's College World Series, go to NCAA.com. The official online home for all 90 NCAA championships. This is what Allo is capable of, and this is why Lisa Fernandez is out talking with Rachel Garcia right now to make sure they're ready. This is a pitch off of Crystal Goodman, low in the zone, and she hits that ball 327 feet. Not just out of the 220 foot fence, but beyond the 300 foot fence. The men's slow pitch ball. In fact, that would have gone out of Yankee Stadium on the short porch and yes. left, and even in right field. Locked. In the short porch and right. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> that would have gone out of a lot of short porches. The target is out there for her in center field that the Sooner fans have put up. Holly, what you got for us? Well, remember, she was asked to step away for a week to take a softball cleanse. She was pressing too much. Her numbers were down, and Patty Gasso said, get away from the game. Didn't take her on a series. Jocelyn told us yesterday, I'm a different player than I was two months ago. When I stepped in the box on that home run, I thought to myself, I won't be denied. And we've seen it from other players, right? It's not only dealing with failure, but it's dealing with success. She was the stud yes. last year. She was all of a sudden the face of the sport. And that's an adjustment for a lot of people to try and yeah, 30 feel home runs comfortable as a that. freshman. Yes. Allo, lighten that one up, back to the track, and it's caught by Bubba Nichols. Two down. I thought this thing was out. The sound off the bat, of course, the crowd. You got to remember Oklahoma, really the home team, the home crowd. As soon as this ball was hit, everyone erupted. The sound, she got it a little bit off of the end because it was a changeup. Sydney Romero, man, she's all over that dugout. You pull that down the line, that's out. That's a, that's a two 18 foot shot. That goes down either line at 200 foot. It's well out. She hit it to the deepest part of the field. Grace Green, a strikeout victim back in the first.
Both aces started last night. And both did not finish. Rachel Garcia, for a good reason, a massive lead. And G. Juarez, well, they fell behind quickly. And Patty Gasso said, you know what, we're gonna, we're gonna take her out here. If we can steal game one, great, but let's make sure we're all in and everybody's rested for game two tonight. 14 years of the champ series, only three teams have been a game one loser and then won two in a row to take the trophy. Two and two. <laughs> and there's Sierra Joy. That's my girl, Sid. And that's her sister and there's mom with the home run ball. And Garcia goes upstairs, the rise for the strikeout. Third for her, but a run across on the Romero bomb, the Rom bomb to make it two to one. Sydney Romero, one of the best careers in a Sooner uniform, wide leadership. She goes down and gets an outside curveball, drives it out of the park, the Sooners within one. Beautiful aerial view of Hall of Fame Stadium as we check out the Capital One Cup standings. They update as teams compete for a combined $400,000 scholarship donation from Capital One. And the winning team of this World Series will receive 60 points towards the Capital Go One Cardinal. Cup. Go Cardinal! Go Cardinal! She was going to start bragging. You see at the top? Yeah. Of the women's, you guys second are in the, men's. the women's, Cardinal. second in the men's. Our baseball team will get to Omaha and we'll, we'll hit the top. <laughs> she was hey. doing Cardinals before we came on camera. Uh, uh, let's so. talk about what's going on right here, and we'll start with uh, Miss Cardinal here and the three home runs already for the two teams. 50% of the runs scored have been via the home run. This sport has arrived in a big way when you talk about the power game and how much these hitters take advantage of mistakes by the pitchers. Well, and how about the pitchers having to throw a gazillion change up so far today because they're trying to take that power away. It, the other thing that's going to be so important is two dimensional pitches. We've seen a lot of pitches staying on one plane. You really have to bend that ball up or down. G yeah. Warriors, when she's throwing that curve ball, I'd like to see it a little bit more down. We used to call it the crop. So it's a curve and a drop or rip it up across to your shoulder and let it let it come up and curve and, and rise. Keep staying on that one Playing. A lot of hitters will feast on that. Three, four, five hitters. Aaliyah Jordan sends it out, and UCLA responds immediately. Her second home run of the champ series. And that's the point we were just making about pitches being one dimensional and staying on a single plane. You've got to be able to bend the ball vertically and, and, Horizontally, so take a look at the pitch location, how it's coming here, but it needs more down. It needs to get down. It needs to get up. It can't stay at that belt level. And Jordan just gets all into that curveball. Juarez has given up two home runs tonight to left-handed hitters. She typically is brutal to the lefties. They've been doing this all year long, the Bruins have, when they give up a run, which isn't very often, they are able to get it right back. And this is their seventh home run in the last 10 innings from five different players. And how about UCLA with their ability to respond. They've only given up runs in 16% of their innings this year. That's like nothing, 16%. But then when they have given up runs, they've responded 45% of the time when they've given up a run, which is amazing. We talk about it being like a boxing match, right, Jess? Yes. Where if you get yep. hit, you gotta hit back. Well, and look at the, just, the opponents have scored in 65 innings this season. Usually has scored in next, half inning 30 times to your point, that 45% response rate. But just look at the shift in energy. We're showing the dugouts. I mean, UCLA is bouncing up and down. They're banging bombs on the fence. They're singing. 
Oklahoma's quiet. They were just a loud team, what, yes. five minutes ago? Well, it's all momentum. You've played in those games. I, it's like it's like a yo-yo. It's just back and forth and back and forth. And the best way to shut your opponent down is, is to score, to put numbers up on the board. The top three in the order for the Bruins are now nine for 16. With five home runs in the champ series. Well, and part of the reason that Warriors has gotten in trouble has been location of pitches. Take a look at where that ball is, right at the belt coming in to, again, right at the belt line going out. And so take a look at how Bubba Nichols right here, that is right in this belt area. You wanna make sure that that pitch, as we talked about earlier, is going to be moving up, moving down. And this one to Aaliyah Jordan right through the zone at that belt level. I think one of the things that will happen next year, she works a little bit more with Jen Rocha, is that she's going to get a little bit more two dimension on that pitch. So it's diving down or rising up. Only 10 home runs in her previous 33 appearances, but now six in her last six outings. Fly ball out to center, Mendez. And Taylor Pack is retired, Holly. And you're talking about that different eye level, Michelle, and making sure that your pitches are moving on different planes. And that's actually something Rachel Garcia of UCLA did after losing here at the Women's College World Series in a heartbreaking fashion last year. The very next day, she called her pitches and coaches and said, I have to get a down pitch. And so she has worked all year to develop that extra pitch that will change the eye level and be different this year at the World Series. Well, and Holly, that's so important. We always talk about how we fool hitters, and it's obviously locates through the zone. Yep. It could be the upper zone, the lower zone, it's speed, and the, when that pitch shows up, off speeds. But you absolutely are best when a hitter cannot split the plate and look only up or look only down. That's that corner to Tauda Lafua, 0-2. Tattle of full base hit up the middle, and Garcia will stop at second. With well, the series finale between the, the New York Yankees and the Toronto Blue Jays will be on Thursday Night Baseball this week. The Yanks have won nine series in a row. They are atop the AL East. We'll see if Toronto can break the Yanks series streak Thursday at 7 Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. Two on with one out, and it's Colleen Sullivan. Seven of the nine have reached base already for UCLA. And how about Tata Lafua? She hit that home run last night. Her next at bat got on on an error. Two singles here after being 0 for 26. You can't stop her. You can only hope to contain Tauta Lafua. <laughs> but she struggled coming yeah. in. I mean, that's the whole thing. Is, yeah. Is, yeah. You never know when that switch is going to flip, especially with the big hitters. Down off speed pitch again, one and two. Jen Rocha will come out, as will Lindsay Elam out to the circle to talk with Juarez. Well, and you can definitely tell that the game plan for UCLA is that after you see a ball, they're just going all in. Every home run tonight has been hit on a 1-0 pitch. And the pitch prior, that first inning, was the off speed in the dirt. She comes back with the curveball, and they hammer it out. So I'm sure they did a lot of study and looking at pitch calling when pitches are showing up. Hey, don't forget, uh, we had a great time at the St. Pete Clearwater Elite Invitational presented by Wilson last year. So we're gonna do it again. 
Tickets are now on sale for our 16-team softball invitational down in Clearwater. The likes of Alabama and Washington, Florida State, Minnesota, UCLA and Oklahoma. All set to be there. Juarez gets the strikeout. Her fourth. Two down for Kinsley Washington. Washington swinging out of her socks on that one. A chuckle as she steps back to regroup. Yeah, if you're, you have a four for four night, you can laugh at a swing and miss. Mm. You go 0 for four, you're, you're, not, you're not smiling. <laughs> Chooses to drop down the bun instead, safe at first. Base is loaded. And let's take a look. How fast do you think this young lady is? Look at where Sydney's starting, where she's gonna have to come, and how quickly that Washington gets down the line. Little bit of miscommunication. That's an easier throw for Romero to be able to pick that up. But Knighton getting into this as well. So much speed. That is a perfectly placed bunt. And the difference between last night and tonight, if Shea Knighton doesn't throw that ball. Yeah. There were so many times where speed of UCLA had the hit and throws were thrown away and then they just kept running. So a good job by the senior to hold on and be like, you know what, it's a hit all the way. Well, the number nine hitter Kelly Gooden is due up. But a singles hitter and a slapper, so they're gonna go to the bench for the pinch hitter Malia Quarles. Has a pinch hit home run. And then the next night followed that up going 0 for 4. So it's it's been living on the edges for Malia. Well, they basically have two hitters and one in that nine spot because Kelly Good, normally the slapper, can use the short game and they'll put Malia in for moments like this. Clearly the power hitter when she comes in. And remember, Players can re-enter in softball, so they utilize the moment. Obviously, right now, bases loaded, they went with power. She has three pinch hit home runs this season, and softball fans will probably remember the last Grand Slam in the championship series off the bat of Emily Carasoni in game two in 2016 against Oklahoma, a walk-off that forced a game three, which the Sooners came back to win. And G's got her in a jam. Here's the 0-2. This is such an important at bat right now because the game is still so close. If there's a big hit from Malia in this moment, you feel like the game is going to, because then Oklahoma's backs are really against the wall. Huge pitch, huge moment for the Sooners right now. And the strikeout for Juarez. Bruins leave him loaded after the Jordan home run gets him up 3 1. G. Juarez pulls out of her back pocket her best pitch, the off speed. You see it flip over that pinky up, thumb down to get the biggest strikeout of the series for Oklahoma. And coach, this game feels a little different, even though you're still getting some good action at the plate and home run. What feels different to you? Um, you know, I think we knew that it was going to be a different game today. That's our sport. I think it's different every time. Um, what I like is that we're still putting pressure on the defense. We're still getting runners on base and making adjustments at the plate. Uh, so I like how it's going, but we're wiping every inning clean and going back like it's 0-0. So, you know, last night there was a lot of action. I still believe great things are happening, but we're playing like it's a 0-0 ball game.
Rachel Garcia continues to be impressive in the circle. What adjustments have you seen them made that concerned you? What are they making? Um, you know, they're just, they're a talented team. They're, they're great hitters. You know, it's a little bit of a guessing game. I think Lisa's calling a great game. You know, Sidney Romero is one of the best hitters in the country. You know, we can go all over the place, but you got sometimes you just got to tip your cap and she put a good cut on a ball. But, you know, I think this is going to be a game. You got higher level players. You're going to put yourself in a position to be able to look for quality pitches to hit. And that's what you're going to see. You're going to see a very explosive, very exciting game. And, and we, you know, we know that it's going to come down to the last punch. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Thanks. Thank you very much, Holly. Kelly Enoy Perez, who stepped on the UCLA campus as a freshman back in the fall of 1988, and was a member of three national championship teams, returned as an assistant coach, and for the last 12 years, the head coach with the one national championship in 2010. Made the adjustment this year. She has uh, essentially taken over the offense. She's the O cord. Kirk Walker is the D cord. And Lisa Fernandez handles the pitchers. And it has worked spectacularly for UCLA. 55 and 6 this year. As they try and get the pack back on top. Shay Knighton. And what a career it has been for her, hoping that it's not the end of the road. In her 21 games now at the Women's College World Series, a 350 hitter with 18 runs batted in in those 21 games, including a most outstanding player trophy a couple of years ago. Shay Knighton, a lot of these Oklahoma hitters they like to start open and they like to stay open. They're actually manipulate that front foot depending on what they're looking for. And Shay Knighton, a lot of times, watch that front foot stay there. Come up, come down, and stay open. She had a home run based on that because if it comes inside, she can clear those hips easily. But we've also seen her struggle on that last swing, perfect example, on pitches away. So it'll come up, it'll come down. And now she's further from that away pitch. You can still hit it. But because this pitch is outside, you see how much she's got to stretch and reach to be able to get anything middle away. Here comes the 2-2 two -two to Knighton. Shea, fly ball out to left, one down. And Jess, I love just what you're talking about. So they go outside, they go outside, she has to reach. So what do they do? She's set up on the inside corner. It's effective velocity, even though it might be coming in the same speed in the high 60s, it feels even faster because now she's a little bit late getting into that inside pitch. It's the art of calling and the battery and the calls from the dugout. It's, it truly is an art figuring out what you want to throw and when. Rachel Garcia has only allowed three hits, two to Sid Romero and one to this batter right here, Nicole Mendez, and she's got another one. Two for two. And that'll bring the tying run to the plate. Gasso wants to talk to Fale of you who is coming up next. And then Lindsay Elam right behind her. So the base runner and the next two hitters there. <laughs> yeah, Patty's the, husband. The whistle of Jim Gasso. It's a family affair for the Gassos, yeah. both her sons in the dugout. Jim's hoping to be whistling tomorrow night as well. The Sooners have to win tonight to get to a game three. And that would be tomorrow night at 8.30 Eastern on ESPN. If UCLA wins tonight, it is the 118th national championship for the Bruins Athletic Department. Of you, one of those four senior starters. 
Grounded out in the second. There are four trips to the World Series, three times in the finals. Titles as freshmen and sophomores, a fourth place finish last year. And a runner now into scoring position. Mendez to second. Score that one a wild pitch. I'm kind of surprised that Paige Halstead didn't grab that. Paige Halstead is a very defensive-minded catching. All she does is catch. She's not hitting in this game the way she gets that one leg down. Now, most catchers nowadays throw from their knees. That's why you see them go down. They're not in that typical squat position. But that's definitely a, definitely a ball she can catch. Just one for their last 31 with a runner in scoring position. They're 0 for 4 tonight. Missed chances in both the first and the second innings to take an early lead. And a view delivers one there. And it's a 3-2 ball game as Mendez comes home. The adjustment folly of you has made against Rachel Garcia. She's rolled over a lot of balls, hit a lot of ground balls the last at bats against her. Watch this adjustment. This is the split grip that she has. See her hand split. What it helps her do is get more on plane with the ball and even swing to meet the ball. The adjustment there she made from ground ball to line drive is what gets herself a knock. You know, the last team to lose game one and come back to win, of course, was the Alabama team dancing in the rain, led by Patrick Murphy and Caleb Bro. Their seniors carried them through game two and got them into that game three of the series. Yeah, when I spoke with them earlier today. You was, talked with Pat yeah, Murphy, It was right? all about, yeah. He said it was really all, was all about learning. They'd never seen Kehlani Ricketts. So game one was all about learning and figuring out how they were gonna hit her and the adjustments they had to make. And that Kayla Bro was adamant telling this entire team they had to buy in, they had to figure it out and trust that there would be a game three, depending on what happened in that game one after that loss. So it was, uh, it was interesting to hear what his response and that's why it's a series. That's why it's no longer a single game championship. And that's why the champ series has really changed things since it was first implemented in 2005. We get those adjustments yes. from at bat to at bat, from game yes. to game. That's what I love, is it tests the players beyond just the first seven innings. Yep. Well, and, and there's time for adjustment. Boy, and Halstead, who is no longer in the batting order because they want her to lock in on being a quarterback and a presence for this defense. She's having a problem seeing the ball. And this might have a lot to do with the barrel being shown by Elam here. Watch how her barrel gets pulled back into the eyes of Paige Halstead. She just completely misses this. Last night, four costly errors for Oklahoma. And now tonight in this inning, a wild pitch and a pass ball. Nicole Mendez doesn't score this inning if the ball doesn't get by Halstead within Fale of at bat. It's always the little things. Taking that extra 60 feet, not giving up the extra 60 feet. Make, make your opponent pay with an out. When you give it to them, it just changes the dynamics. And the momentum shifts again for oh, the Mendes. fourth time tonight. UCLA had it. Oklahoma grabbed it. UCLA took it back. And now it's the Crimson and Cream hollering.
Tying run in scoring position. Go ahead at the plate. Lindsey Elam in the eighth spot in the order. Two. I'm sure that Lisa Fernandez came out and talked with Rachel Garcia and said, look, we need greater vertical separation between your pitches. A lot of her pitches are coming in that mid-thigh area. They either need to be up in that rise ball zone up near your letters, or they need to be at the knee. The first pitch was right at the knee, called for a strike. Next pitch was that rise ball up, and you get the foul off on it. Two really good strikes for Garcia. Two and two. There has not been a come from behind win at the Women's College World Series this year. The Sooners need to get one to stay alive. And I like, Smitty, to your point, not only location, but Garcia getting in on the hands of Elam. One of the hardest things to do as a pitcher is to really get in the kitchen, to challenge these Oklahoma hitters who are sitting on one part of the plate to get off her plate. Well, that's that new pitch. That's the drop ball that's uh, got a little bit of off-speed nature to it. So she'll throw her hard stuff at 69, 71 miles an hour, rise ball earlier this count. That last pitch drop coming in at 63. Her changeup's been coming in around 55, so throwing three different speeds. I'd like to see her throw a curveball, really start to rip that ball and run it into that left hand as batter's box against these righties. So she comes back with the screwball. She goes back underneath the hands. Second time through the order now. A home run and a couple of base hits. They are starting to chip away at the National Player of the Year bit here. Elam drives it back, and it is out of the glove of Kelly Gooden. Here comes the runner home, and Rogers ties it up. strike hit. This ball is down at her shins. Lindsay Elam does a beautiful job going down to get this. And for Kelly Gooden, she jumps too early. This is such a tough grab to make. She first froze on it. This would have been a great catch with the timing of all of this. Again, pressure, adrenaline, reactions. This ball was smoked. And now the go-ahead run in scoring position an exact mirror image of UCLA's third inning last night when three errors helped them get two runs home. Now here in the Sooner fourth, a wild pitch, a pass ball, a dropped fly out, and two runs are home. That's a 71 mile an hour rise ball, and Oklahoma is not even sniffing at that ball. They're, they're, they're not even going after it. Against Washington, yep. she had 16 strikeouts. Yep. They were swinging through that pitch. Discipline. Ryan 
Bruins thought about dropping it down. The UCLA bottom of the order was so good in game one. And now it's the bottom of the Sooner lineup, Barkin. Distracted there by the runner at second base. This is a changeup that gets hit right back up the middle, and I think she just thinks it's past her. She's pulled in a little bit. If she was deeper, maybe she goes back and gets that or lays down, but you're right. She, she doesn't Knock even die for it. Knock it down because potentially that ball gets to the green. How about four hits in a row for Oklahoma? Well, after uh, going one for 31 risk, how about three straight in the last three ABs with a runner in scoring position? And now the go ahead at third, and here comes two for two with a tater. Sydney Romero stepping in. No activity in the UCLA bullpen right now. They are going with Garcia. In the first and third situation, they will allow Lions to proceed to second. And that's exactly why Sydney Romero showed a bunt there. She did not want a bunt. For those of you who are wondering, wait, she's got a double and a home run, and there's one out. Why would she even think? She did that to pull the infield in to get that runner to second base on a steal. Well, now it looks like UCLA is going to go ahead and load up the bases and walk Sid. As Holly Rowe told us earlier about this terrific senior class, this is the one that has been wanting so far at the World Series. And what a spot for Kaylee Clifton to step into. The kid who grew up literally at Reeves Park on the ball yards right across from Oklahoma's home stadium, dreaming about putting the uniform on and swinging away at the first pitch. This is when your heart's pounding, Beth. I mean, your heart is pounding. Kaylee Clifton, yes, she's a senior. Yes, she's played and won World Series titles. But right now, this moment, you're right. When you're a kid, you dream of this is when you want to be up to bat. Bases are loaded with a chance to get your team ahead. But oh my gosh, you have to control that heartbeat. We talked to Patty Gasso this week. She said, I don't want you to take anybody off my team, but if you had to, you cannot have Kaylee Clifton. That's heartbeat. That's that's when adrenaline. We've seen Smitty, you mentioned it, laying off Rachel Garcia and that rise ball all series long. But all of a sudden you get a big moment and that ball looks so big, even if it is two feet over your head. Went for, for the rise, up and out. And for Garcia, ahead now, two strikes. She needs to be very careful. These pitchers in this situation, the two strikes. Making sure that you're on point, 
Well, she's going to come back up. She's going to go back upstairs with that rise ball. Kaylee Clifton knows it. But with two strikes, you still got to protect. Struck her out. Garcia wins the battle. Two down. And this is where you know as a hitter, you want this ball so bad. Rise ball, first pitch swinging. She takes a pitch away. She gets something up in the zone again, and that's the pitch right there. Rachel Garcia knows I can go back up there, and she will swing at my rise ball. Beautifully located, starts at the hip, ends up at the top of the strike zone. And a great setup pitch going down and away, coming back up and underneath the hands. Jocelyn Allo. 0 for 5 in the championship series. But with 46 home runs in her first two years in Norman. Not a good looking swing there as Garcia had her confused. And I like that. Garcia's rise ball now is coming in 68-69. It's down a little bit from 71. She's not throwing through her spin. When you over, you have too much velocity, that ball doesn't move the way it's supposed to. More smoke at 72 miles an hour from Rachel. It's that combination. You blow the heat by or you spin it underneath them. Love it. Oh. <laughs> I mean, that's just a foul ball. You guys, it cleared the stadium over our head. Back behind us. This is the 15th game of this World Series. We have not had a team take a lead. <laughs> The entire time we've been here. That's a great take, but you know where she's headed. This entire stadium knows where she's headed. She's coming back up. Power on power. Power hitter, power pitcher, rise ball. And Jocelyn Allo, who loves it up in the zone. Came in on her hands there. Looks like a screwball. Four straight hits from the bottom of the order, and then Kelly I decides to walk Sid Romero. Garcia gets a strike out of Clifton, and now a two-strike count on Allo with two down. Right back to Rachel and over to first. And the Sooners leave them loaded. But they do get two in to tie it up in a must-win situation for OU. They come back and even the score with the bottom of the order bringing it home. This game, G. Juarez gives up back-to-back -back home runs. Then she comes back with two strikeouts. Then you come back to tie the game. How is this roller coaster of emotion feeding your team right now? Um, the crowd is helping a lot, but they're just fighting. They're battling, and that's what we got to do here. And Honestly, when you look at their faces, they're smiling. They're having fun. This is this is what you dream about. This these these kinds of tight games, playing one of the best teams absolutely in the country, top to bottom. So um, these are memories. This is what you this is what you live for if you're a softball player. For Rachel Garcia, you forced her to throw 40 pitches last inning. How does that help your cause trying to make her work that hard? Uh, it helps our cause, but she's a star. I mean, she knows how to handle these situations. What I'm proud of is uh, the six, seven, eight, nine doing their job to turn over that lineup. Um, they were fighting. There's some really great battles that we have at the plate. So I'm proud of this team, and we're just going to keep going. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Thank you very much, Holly. Oklahoma has to win to play again tomorrow night. If UCLA wins, they get the party started this evening. And a 12th NCAA championship trophy back to Westwood. Oh, I think Patty was on to something there, guys. Right. Such a high right. level of intensity and a high level of softball intelligence yes. we're seeing 
back and forth. UCLA's decision to walk Romero, it pays off for them. And now they've got the top of the order coming up to respond. They have been spectacular in this championship series. Five home runs and eight ribbies from the folks that are supposed to be setting your table. Oh, they're setting it. And they're, and they're clearing it. And they're chowing <laughs> down. I was going to say, they're cleaning. <laughs> they're feasting at the uh, home run buffet. You hit like that, somebody else will clear your table for you. And, and as they've done throughout this season, an innate ability to respond when someone puts up a run or two. Both teams in their last at bat left the bases loaded, so there could have been even more damage done. But again, Garcia and Juarez making the right plays in the circle. Get it, Bob. Here we go for it. See it, Bob. Here we go. Nichols, grounder to Lions. One down. Three Perez, the solo shot in the first, and then Juarez struck her out in the second. So the next two hitters, uh, Perez and Jordan, home run in game one, and a home run in game two. Well, and that changeup that Bubba Nichols just put in play was the first changeup hit because they've been attacking this curveball, this hard pitch on the outside corner. They haven't been able to hit the changeup. They've been laying off it or fouling it off, not putting it in play, really attacking the hard stuff. So we'll see if some adjustments are being made with Bubba Nichols. Sophomore out of Martinez, California. Number one recruit in the country coming out of high school a couple of years ago and followed her sister Kylie. And Bria has stepped into her own twice, all Pac 12 first teamer. Down to the night, two down. I'm sure you've uh, heard about their second rated recruit they've got coming in next year by the name of Maya Brady, who Tom says is the best athlete in the family. As Knight Tom makes who? the play there. That guy, Tom Brady, pretty good, pretty good throwing the pill around. Yeah, but his sisters played softball. He yes. was always yes. Maureen Brady's little brother. There you go. <laughs> now she's got a stud coming to UCLA. Tom knows his softball. So with two down, it's Jordan, a strikeout and a home run and laying down the bunt and it will go foul. Aliyah Jordan, big home run last inning, was able to go down and get a pitch. Again, the curveball crushes this one and she has been swinging a hot bat. Home run last night, another one today. One one to Jordan. Batting over 500 in this Women's College World Series. Overcoming an ACL injury in her freshman year. Tommy John surgery in the offseason. And when asked if she wanted to redshirt, she said absolutely not. Was only cleared to play to throw less than a month ago. This is a team that can win a championship, and I want to contribute. Oh, 
I'd say she's had a hand in things so far. <laughs> Two two from G coming. Here's a look at the scar from that Tommy John surgery. You don't hear about it in softball as much. My sister had the same surgery. You can come back and play as a position player so much quicker than pitchers. She got hit by a pitch there. Yes, she, she told our Holly Rowe that it really didn't affect her at the plate, but she had to really change and adjust the way she threw the ball out in the outfield. Holly? Well, you know, she's really had to improve that throwing in the outfield. It's been very difficult as she comes back from that surgery. She had the surgery August 20th, so she's not even um, a year out of a very significant surgery. We saw her in the outfield yesterday. She even ran and dove a couple of times on that, but she has really held up and been mentally strong coming back from that very difficult surgery. Well, maybe one of the biggest matchups of this whole night right here if Juarez can prevent UCLA from responding immediately to the two runs in the top half of the inning from the Sooners. Comfortable takes now from so many of these hitters. You go back to back nights being able to face the same pitcher. Everyone just looks really comfortable in the batter's box, and that's why we're seeing more offense these last two games and tonight, even from Oklahoma, to go along with UCLA's offense. Yeah, and again, that's exactly what Patrick Murphy said. That was part of what they were looking to do when they went that three game series after dropping game one. A reminder after our game ends on ESPN, we've got Sports Center with Anderson and Eves, the latest on the health of Blake Thompson and Kevin Durant. Also, OBJ's first workout with the Browns in Cleveland, and also top moments from the WCWS at Sports Center after our game tonight on ESPN and the ESPN app. We had a good time to talk a little bit about Rachel Garcia, the first player in Pac 12 history to win both pitcher and player of the year honors in the same season. She will spend her summer with the U.S. national team and possibly next summer at the Olympics in Tokyo with Team USA as she tries to join. Look at those legends of the game. Kat, Dilo with the Velo, and Kehlani. Two Olympians and one another possible future Olympian, Kehlani yeah. Ricketts. They could be teammates next summer, right? What has happened in the past is collegiate Olympians have taken a year off, traded in their school jersey for the red, white, and blue, and then come back for their final year. Still remains to be seen what kind of a pre-Olympic tour will be taken next year, and of course, whether or not Rachel ends up making the final roster. She's got a great chance of doing that. Cole Mendez, I, I, I've never seen a player so in tune and feeding off the crowd, getting them up. I mean, she's like a cheerleader out there feeding off of this and knowing her team does too. 3-2 to Garcia in the dirt. And then Jordan to second, and she'll try for third. And she's in there safe. And the Bruins have the go-ahead 60 feet away. Terrific hustle by Aaliyah Jordan. And I love that because the play's in front of her so she can see what's going on. This ball is going to get past Elam and it's going to go toward the UCLA dugout. And look at the way Jordan, she takes a look and then goes right down 
to second. But takes advantage third. of Lindsay Elam, who's not hustling after exactly. this. She knows, okay, Jordan, you're going to get to second. But because I'm so close to third, she doesn't hustle after that ball. And that's where Jordan says, you want to walk on me to that ball? I'll take third, sister. Two quick outs, and you thought the Sooners were going to be three up and three down, but now a hit batter and a walk, and they've got runners on the corners with two outs for Taylor Pack. Both coaches talked about it, the mental toughness and the concentration required in pressure situations at the end of this long road to the championship series. Series history, it's number one versus number two. In game two, best of three. The Bruins winning game one last night in convincing fashion. And a much closer affair tonight. And a game that Oklahoma has to have or their season is over. And the run for these brilliant seniors comes to a close as they try for a third national championship not going to be easy to come by against Garcia, who only had to throw the five innings last night, 40 pitches in that fifth inning. Wow. As the Sooners got eight to the plate and scored twice. That's massive. I mean, we typically like to say 12 to 15 pitches an inning when everything's going right. So that's like a that's like a triple inning. Green, Knighton, and Mendez coming up. And that last pitch, Beth, showing a little bit of non-competitive pitches now starting to pop out of Garcia's arm. That last curveball in the outside corner started well into the river and just continued into left-handed batter's box. And this is a big bat for Oklahoma. Grace Green, she's a freshman. But you look at her body, you look at her strength, how she's stacked over the place. She's had two strikeouts tonight. Her bat has yet to get going, but it is a big, big power bat. The Big 12 Freshman of the Year, but only batting 143 so far at the World Series. And for the first time in a tight situation, there is activity in the UCLA pen. Megan Faremo on the left, Holly Azevedo on the right. They both pitched an inning last night when the game was well in hand. Green, high fly ball, Nichols under it. And center, one down. Here comes Shea Knighton. They call her big play Shea and Norman because it hits like this. Game one of the 2017 finals in the 17th inning. The game winner. She also had the game winning RBIs in game two the next night as the Sooners beat the Gators for a national championship. 
She just knows how to hit on the big stage. She's locked in, she's not distracted. She's got a great, a great game plan. And uh, one of their assistants, Delaney Gorley, was on that Florida team. Now on the other side, and Knighton. Garcia's had her number here tonight. 0 for 3 for Shea, two down. Nicole Mendez, two for two, scored a run in the fourth. All Women's College World Series selection two years ago as a freshman. And in that 17 inning game, had, probably had the defensive play of the night that Patty Gasso still raves about. She plays with emotion. We've showed her in center field, ramping up the crowd, coming out of the dugout. She's got her teammates back, and she'll let you know it. Well, we need to follow up on Smitty's commode report uh, from game one. When <laughs> you have a rough night like the Sooners had last night, you just got to flush it. And in the post-game pressers last night, all they talked about was flushing it. For and, sure. and I would like to clarify that I was not in the commode when I <laughs> had that report, that I reported that you have to flush it. That is correct. So, Good clarification. <laughs> Thank Lost you. Lost 16 to 3. <laughs> well, it is on both sides. You have that we always say short-term memory. It doesn't matter how much success you've had. You've got to come out today and prove it. UCLA is having to work very hard in this game. Same thing for Oklahoma. Yesterday's over. Last inning is over. Go ahead, run on board for OU. Second walk for Garcia. So the go ahead run is on. And remarkably enough, there has not been a single lead change in 15 games of the World Series. And after falling behind 2-0, Oklahoma will try and change the lead right here on the wild pitch that gets Mendez over to second. One time. Patty Gasso's words to her hitter. Folly of you. They do not bite right now. It's amazing, though, because the adrenaline's down. We saw, though, in the at-bats that ended the last inning with the bases loaded, Jocelyn Allo, Kay Kaylee Clifton started chasing that rise ball. But even though there's a runner at second, you can tell there's a calm. There isn't as much excitement, so they're not chasing that pitch up in the zone. Taking it, not even biting. I mean, that's the thing to me, Smitty, is sometimes you'll start to see the lower half trigger. Sometimes you'll see the hands start to go. I mean, they're spitting on that pitch. And I think, you know, the two lefties have done damage. They started everything last inning in that fourth and both ended up scoring. I, I, part of me wonders if she's unintentionally, intentionally walking folly of you, maybe getting to the righty, Lindsay Elam. But Elam had that double her yeah. last at bat as well. So this bottom half of the lineup is seeing the ball extremely well off of Rachel Garcia. If Oklahoma wins tonight, we're back here tomorrow night for game three, 8.30 Eastern on ESPN. If UCLA wins it, they take home the championship trophy tonight. And the walk to a view. And it's Lindsay Elam, who Patty Gasso calls perhaps the player who's improved the most on the team this year. Elam. 
in. And back on the grass is B uh, Brie Perez for the third out. Couple stranded to the bottom of the fifth, even at three all in game two. Fifth at a 3-3 game. Top seeded Oklahoma, the two seed UCLA, Garcia and Juarez dueling. The Bruins, the top three hitters, each with a solo home run today. Sydney Romero has countered with a home run of her own, and it's actually been the bottom of the Sooner lineup that is generating some offense for them. As we move deeper into the night, and a must win for the Sooners, or UCLA wins the championship. She goes and gets a curveball coming in hard. Every home run's been hit off of this pitch and again elevated at the belt line. This pitch does not get in and because of that, it gets out. How about 0 for 26 coming up with a couple of big home runs in this champ series. Three home runs all year, two, two in this champ series. Talalafua, Perez and Jordan each with two apiece. That is her third hit of the night. And a 4-3 Bruin lead. And now the Bruin side has the momentum back. And when they grab the lead back, they are now six outs away from a 12th title. Watch Brianna Tatalafua's feet. Watch her understand, hey, I gotta get a little bit more off the plate. They might come in. Watch her back foot. She moves to the edge of the batter's box. Why she has struggled with anything in on her hands. What an adjustment. You know how hard that is to do as the pitcher is starting to throw because she does it then so that Elam doesn't see and adjust to it. And as a pitcher, you should see that. You need to make that adjustment as you're coming in mid-pitch when you see that. You throw a ball. I mean, especially when you're ahead 0-1. I mean, that is all the little stuff that you must look for mid-pitch. 12th home run now of the World Series for UCLA. Eight of them in the last two games. And the Bruin bubble is bouncing. Deep in the hole, Lions. What a throw. Grace Lions, is that a freshman? Yes, is that 18 is. years old? I mean, this looks like something you'd see in Major League Baseball because of her ability to throw this ball with so much strength. She goes down to the knee, comes up, and fires a shot. Doesn't even make it close at first base. I thought this thing was going to bounce. I thought she was going to have to hop it, but no. From the knee and fires up her pitcher, Juarez. Big bounce back for her after the two errors yesterday at short as Tautalafua's family gets the home run ball. Kinsley's one for two. Singled in the third, went small ball. Because of that, the defense for Oklahoma is so pinched in because they know about the speed. She puts this ball down, and she can just wheel it down the line. Middle infielders pinched in, corners pulled up. Kinsley Washington is always smiling. Yeah. She gets out of the box. She's got a big grin <laughs> on her face. She'll swing and miss. She's going to smile. She's always got this smile that she's just she's enjoying the game.
And there she goes again. <laughs> Even when she doesn't agree with the call. Five for six in her first championship Ooh. series. That's the pitch. I mean, you could argue with Tata Lafua, obviously the power, but Kinsley Washington's been the best contact hitter. She doesn't swing and miss a whole lot, guys. And she does swing and miss. You know it's a good one that got her. Her dad, James, who was a big-time football player for the Bruins, and a strikeout for Juarez, two down. Sixth tonight for G. And a reminder that we've got extra bonus coverage for you. We're calling it pitch by pitch, brand new tonight. Four different camera angles to watch the pitchers. And this is on ESPN3 and available on your ESPN app, pitch by pitch. Watch the game, throw this on your iPad. Got it, what, over 20 cameras, over 30 cameras here in this park. Be able to see so many different uh -huh. angles. Cover the game, it's big time. I love it. Overhead, yep, airplane. Such a beautiful look. Kelly Gooden in the nine spot. The best freshman batting average in the country this year. Now hitting 424. Coming into the game tonight. Lindsay <laughs> Fowler, the former All-American at Arizona. Arizona. Lions right at her at short. And Chowda Lafua, her second home run ball of the champ series. And it gives UCLA the lead. You're gonna get hot. This is the right time. Only three home runs all season, but she's got two here in Oklahoma City. Sold out Hall of Fame Stadium in Oklahoma City. Game two of our championship series. If UCLA wins, the title is theirs. If the Sooners win, we're back here tomorrow for game three. And the Brianna Taudalafua home run in the bottom of the fifth inning has the Bruins on top and six outs away from a title. After a 16-3 Whooping yesterday. The Sooners have responded much better tonight. But it's still in the hands now of Rachel Garcia, the National Player of the Year, to try and bring it home. This is when you start to start to feel. You might not be counting them, but you feel the outs if you're Oklahoma. You have six outs to play with. And with each one, the pressure mounts. Three of the four seniors at least will get another swing. It's nine and then the top of the order. Lions and then senior Sid Romero and senior Kaylee Clifton. In their 21st World Series game, they have won 90% of their games. Lions. Ah, and foul territory, and it's handled by Gooden. One down. And I love the way Paige Halstead looks at Garcia, taps her chest protector, and says, trust me, like, come inside. You can do it. Puts her glove down, and Garcia goes right for it and induces that jam job foul ball. The communication between this battery right now is just super intense.
Two for two, a double, a home run, and then intentionally walked in the fourth inning. And the Bruins got the next two batters out to end the threat, so the strategy worked. I think you'd be very careful here, too. Because when Cindy is on, she can hit away. She can hit inside. She can hit any strike. So you want to make her chase a ball. Back to the third inning, this towering shot. She was able to get around a pitch that was supposed to be away, ended up leaking back over the middle of the plate, and a mistake is what you can't do against a bat like Sydney Romero. Ooh. That's a nice pitch. That's where the home run ball was supposed to be that bled back into the zone. What a great job of setting up Sid Romero. They go back to that outside corner low. Look at the way this pitch is going to move. It's going to hit that corner. It's going to go down. It's going to be fouled off. So what does that do? It changes the eye level. It changes the velocity level of this pitch coming in. A rise ball that just jams up Romero. She doesn't get the barrel on it. She's jammed up, and because of that, induces that fly ball. Clifton. 0 for 2 with a couple of strikeouts. Was also hit by a pitch back in the third. As Garcia continues to go right after the Sooner hitters. This year, undefeated in this NCAA tournament. For Rachel Garcia, she's thrown almost every pitch. Certainly all the big ones. Five and two thirds with the four strikeouts tonight. thinking about her grandpa Bob Papa written on her visor his spirit with her just at low two and one and you think of all the the big names in the circle over the years starting with Debbie doom and the first national championship under the NCAA back in 1982. And all the good ones that have won here, most recently Megan Langenfeld and Garcia and UCLA are now three outs away from a title. They'll swing them one more time when we come back. Capital One rewarding performance and four more home runs for UCLA tonight. Starts off with Bubba Nichols, the solo shot backed right up by Bree Perez. Both those in the first inning. And Leah Jordan follows up within the third. And then in the fifth inning, it was Brianna Tautelafua, and that's been the difference. The four solo hot, you think of four solo shots, you think about it, seven hits. But for those home runs, we've kind of said it all series long. 50% of the runs scored mm -hmm. via the home run. No one knows that better than UCLA. And it's even more than that for the Bruins. 11 of their 20 so far off of eight home runs the last two nights. As the score stands, UCLA would win a championship. Oklahoma would need to mount a comeback in the seventh inning to stay alive. 
Top of the order for the fourth time tonight to face Juarez. All three at the top have homered. to the, the three-peat in 88, 89, and 90, the only time that's happened in softball history. Lions has it one down. 1992, maybe one of the best teams in history when Lisa Fernandez went undefeated and they outscored opponents at the World Series 31 to one. 99 with Newman and Adams and Christy Ambrosi. They went back to back again in 03 and 04. Kira Garrow, a no hitter in the final. Nate Knighton with the snag, two down. And then of course their last in 2010. Here comes Jordan. Three, four, and five, by the way, would be due up, including Shea Knighton for the Sooners in the seventh. Few have had more heroic hits than her on this biggest of stages. Jordan base hit. Garcia struck out in the first, walked in the third and the fourth. A home run on Sunday to win the semis. A home run in game one to help the Bruins. one of her two sons in the dugout with her on her staff. Garcia right to Romero, side retired. Last chance for Oklahoma. Jocelyn Allo will lead them and Shea Knighton will have a shot when we come back. It's just so much fun to wear Oklahoma across my chest. Coming in as a freshman, I remember coming in with nothing to lose and everything to gain. The seniors in this group are the best class uh, maybe ever. And the seniors are down to their final at bat. A remarkable run with two national championships trying to become a three-time winner. That hasn't happened for a single class in over 20 years. They need at least one to tie it, or UCLA wins the natty. Allo, Green, and Knighton, the heart of the order, to face the National Player of the Year, Rachel Garcia. Oh, 
one, two. Jocelyn, after a hot bat throughout the postseason, has cooled here in the Champ Series 0 for 6. Freshman Grace Green. That's such a good pitch to be able to find that one spot inside. You got to understand these Oklahoma hitters have been sitting in prepared to hit in, but Garcia able to find the spot that still makes them jump. Says, get off my plate. Allows them to back off just a bit to set up what she's gonna throw next. Challenges her again. More rise on the first pitch, more screwball on that last one. Kept it away. Grace Green, high fly ball. Gooden back on the track and makes the catch. Two down. Wow. And it will come down to Garcia and Knighton. Grace Green, actually, she gets all of this. She hits it so hard and good and up against the wall, makes a perfect grab. Remember, it was her misplay in left field earlier this game that allowed an Oklahoma run to score. She makes up for it with that catch. The most outstanding player two years ago against the most likely to win it this year as it stands. Yeah. One and oh. Garcia with that rise ball. Woof. This is the time to use it. You're down to your last out for Oklahoma. It's so hard to not want the pitch up in the zone. The one that if you do connect with it, will leave the yard. Two and one. This is why 
way she plays. She's had two surgeries on her knees, insists that she be on the field because she knows she's the one that can get her team back in this game to tie it up. She's had some big ones, but her senior year in that moment. And a rise ball that just was not up enough on a 2-1 count. Wow. Tenth home run of the year. She's None had, bigger. She's had five here at the World Series. Five. 1-0 to Nicole Mendez. Been coming here 26 years. I, I don't know if there's been a greater to grace this field. In the last four years, Shea, big play Shea for a reason. And now the Bruins have to regroup. Try and take care of Mendez and see if they can get a walk off for the second time in three nights. After a semifinal extra inning walk off win against Washington on Sunday. Garcia. And a moment they'll be talking about for a long, long time down to their final out and Knighton strikes. It's destiny, Shea Knighton. Oklahoma down to their last two strikes. She says, I need just one. And sends it out of the yard. Approval from her teammates. We're nodded back up at four apiece. Big play, Shea, for a reason, five. World Series home runs, but this one, her team was about to go home. Season end, her career ends. She said, I will not go out unless I go on my own terms. Laura Chamberlain, <laughs> the home run queen. Is she pumped just a little bit? She's calling her a legend. Uh, Lauren hit a walk off in a champ series game back in 2013 for the Sooners. The all-time home run leader. And how about hitting it off of Garcia, her travel ball yes. teammate. High school. From Angels Tyson. So now can UCLA walk it off in the bottom of the seventh? Taylor Pack, there's your game winner. There's your championship winner on first base. And here comes Brianna Tatalafua. Back in the fist, she did this. Her second home run of the series. I would throw every single pitch off speed. Every single one. Brianna Tatalafua, there's a lot of great hitters in this lineup. No one is seeing Juarez better than Brie Tatcha-Lafu. Not just the home run, but she's had a double and single to add to that. Tatcha-Lafu laying down the sacrifice. And the championship winning run in scoring position with one out. That's a tough call. Yeah, three for three, and they choose That's the bunt. That's a tough call. I love the sacrifice. I love getting a runner in scoring position. Right now, Kelly out with Kirk Walker. They're going back and forth discussing some stuff. I don't know if that might have been a missed call or not, but I was surprised. Because now you're setting up for seven, eight, and nine hitters with really the best hitter in this lineup against Juarez to lay down that sacrifice. I don't know. We'll see, though. You've got Sullivan due up. And then after that, Kinsley Washington, who has five hits in the two series games. But a big gamble right there to yeah. sacrifice with Brianna. Yes.
If, if uh, UCLA walks off, they have a 12th title. If Oklahoma holds here and wins in extras, we'll be back tomorrow. Game three if necessary, 8.30 Eastern on ESPN. The rookie from Poway, California. A walk, a strikeout, and a ground out. Taylor Pack out at second base after the leadoff single. And all after Shea Knighton tied it with a solo home run with two outs in the top of the seventh. Sullivan to Lyons, she'll go to third. The tag applied by Romero, and they cut down Pack. Two outs as Pack runs on a roller to the left side. And this is right in front of Lyons. Take a look. She's running right in front. She's right here. That is an easy out. I love the fact that she's like, uh-uh, you're not getting that bag. Well, and the freshmen, I mean, there's still a lot of things that can go wrong. You can still hit the runner. You can throw this ball away. Lyons sees her, makes a perfect throw, and gets the out. Sullivan will be able to get over to second. A wild pitch. Charge to Juarez. So now Sullivan is the championship winner. This ball just short hops Elam. And so runner back in scoring position. But the problem is that wild pitch would have then moved a runner to third had Pack not been thrown out trying to advance. Jackie Prober. <laughs> will now come on to run at second to try and win it all for UCLA. A little flare, and that will get down in front of a view. Prober to the plate, the throw, and she's safe. And UCLA makes it an even dozen. And they are back on top with a 12th national championship. Kinsley Washington. The championship winning RBI single. And a walk off to win the title. <laughs> Trophy number 12 and the emotion from Kinsley Washington. And the end of the line for that extraordinary Oklahoma senior class. And a 5-4 walk-off win for UCLA. And the emotions for Rachel Garcia as she becomes the fourth. National Player of the Year to win a trophy, and for Kelly Enoy Perez, her second as a head coach after she picked up three playing for the Bruins. And the drought is over for the Pac-12, their first title since 2011.
When it comes down to number one and number two, you knew it was going to have an ending like this, literally down to inches, inches. Look at this slide coming around. Elam at home, a perfect slide to be able to get in there, only playing with one out. And to end it like this for the Bruins to win it in walk-off fashion. <laughs> and the dog pile. The dog pile <laughs> on Washington. <laughs> the most decorated program in softball adds another one. 118 titles now for Bruins Athletics. And they counter the Shea Knighton home run to tie it in the top of the seventh. And they walk off to win it. What a night in Oklahoma City in a battle back and forth. And a 5-4 UCLA win. And now Rachel Garcia adds her name to a very short list with legends Danielle Laurie, Kehlani Ricketts, and Lauren Hager, a National Player of the Year. And right next to that on the trophy shelf, the Natty. And possibly next summer, an Olympic gold medal. And what a night for the Bruins as they sweep the champ series. And down on the field, Holly Rowe with our most outstanding player, Rachel Garcia. Rachel Garcia, you start the night tonight and two of your teammates hit home runs. What kind of comfort that de did that give you in the circle to really buckle down and hit your spots in the circle? I mean, it was just super huge. I mean, I think our game plan was to punch first, and we did. And yeah. I mean, props to, props to their lineup. They're such a strong offensive team. And, you know, we weren't going down without a fight. And to know that my team had my back in any situation was just absolutely huge. You go to the, south, the seventh inning, the top of the seventh, and Shane Knighton is up at the plate, a longtime friend. I saw you hug her after the game and tell her you love her. She's a friend of yours. She hits a home run. What went through your mind when she tied the game? Um, I just laughed because I knew in my mind, I was like, well, that was a totally missed pitch. But um, just a little inside scoop between me and my teammates is just like hashtag toad because you just got to flush it and move on to the next pitch because that's what's most important is how you bounce back from something like that. But I mean, like I said, such an awesome performance from both of our both teams and um, just being able to have that fight that we did was just clutch. The feeling you had when you walked off this field last year, you rededicated yourself, you learned a new pitch, you changed your body. How did you pay into this moment right now? Been preparing for this since day one and just to see it all pay off. I mean, all the coaches, my teammates, just we fought every single day just to get to this moment and just to see it, everything pay off, I can't be blessed. Can't even just imagine, like, I'm just in loss of words right now. <laughs> when this tournament started, you told me your family was building a shelf for you for all of your National Player of the Year awards. You got another one this year. But what did you tell me you would trade them all for? This national championship, because what's most important is this team right here. You've been thinking this whole tournament, dedicating it to your grandfather, Bob. Why was he so important in your life? He was just that life for me. And I knew he was with me this entire moment. I'm just so happy right now because I knew he was right there with me. And I just can't believe I got to share this moment with all of them. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you to Holly and to Rachel Garcia, the Capital One Tournament Most Outstanding Player, celebrating the game winner. And a 12th national championship for UCLA, their first in nine years. And the pack is back, and the Bruins are back on top. A reminder, Sports Center is coming up next. 
on your app. You can watch the trophy presentation. And we'll be back with more from Oklahoma City in just a bit. But first, let's get you over to Sports Center. Well, thank you very much, guys. And what a night here. Game two, five to four after Oklahoma comes back to tie it up on the Shea Knight and home run. Kinsley Washington, the newest Bruin legend as she drives in the game winner and a walk off for UCLA for the second time in the last three nights. Well, and just the seventh inning. I mean, you think about it, come into the night, or the seventh, Oklahoma's down, they tie it up with Shea Knight and big play Shea. You think, okay, this is turning the momentum. This is what Oklahoma needed. This entire home crowd erupts. You go bottom of the seventh and you get this. Kinsley Washington with the single and the slide at home to walk it off. And the newest hero is now with Holly. Kinsley, your last at bat, you had struck out. You had a big smile on your face. You wouldn't see it as clearly as you wanted to. What changed in that last at bat with the score tied and the game on the line? I just knew that. I just didn't want Rachel to have to go out there and pitch another inning. Honestly, she's really put this team on her back all of postseason, and I just really just, I, I could not let her pitch another inning for this team. What did you see on the pitch that allowed you to get that hit? She has a great backdoor curve, and I was in my mind, I said, if it, if it looks like it's going to hit me, that means it's going to go back over the plate. So if it hits me, it hits me. If I swing, I swing. So just big, just big hacks. When it got through and you knew Prober was going to come around and score, what was your reaction? At first, I was like, oh, is she going to do a backdoor slide? Is she, what is she going to do? What is she going to do? And she had the most amazing slide at home. And just, just all props to her. All props to her. Kinsley, I know that you guys have been thinking that diamonds come from pressure. You've had the diamonds on your cheek all week. How did you rise in this pressure-packed moment to be a diamond for this team? Well, our coach always says that pressure is a privilege. So I guess I had the biggest privilege tonight. Thank you so much. Thank you. What a night for UCLA and a walk-off win. Kinsley Washington, the game winner, as Rachel Garcia closes out an incredible run through this postseason, 9-0 in the circle for the Bruins, and they are back on top for the first time since 2010. You guys, coming into this series, it was one versus two for the first time that we've ever had a championship series, and this was the finish that you expected. Yeah, this was definitely one versus two. We saw the long ball, but yes. how about the walk-off, right? Yeah. They had to produce it, and it was the wild pitch that moved that runner into scoring position and Washington getting it done. But it was just a battle, and it's always the little things that end up determining the fate of both these teams. Yeah, we also send off that incredible senior class for the Sooners who leave with two national championships and three trips to the finals. Well, and I think also about Oklahoma and what they were able to do after losing 16 to three last night, coming back, competing. Every inning was a battle in Shea Knighton. What a career, one of the best we'll see here in Oklahoma City. The UCLA Bruins, your national champions on a wild night that featured four solo home runs and then the singles hitter with the biggest single of her life to drive in the game winner and walk it off in the bottom of the seventh. For our entire crew, it is such an honor and a privilege to bring you all these moments from the Women's College World Series. Thanks for being with us and we'll see you next year. And it's sick.
Coach Kelly Inouye Perez, you have won as a national champion as a player. You're second now as a coach. What went through your mind when you saw her slide into home and touch that plate? I, I, I mean, I'm overwhelmed with emotion. You know, it's so different as a player. It's so rewarding to be able to be on the field. But as a coach, you just, you really want it for these girls. You, they work so hard. They commit. They've been so bought in. I mean, I also want to just, you know, it's for all the Bruins that came before them that got us back to OKC, that built that experience. But the amount of emotion is I'm so proud because they, they believed. They stuck to it. We talked about they were going to throw punches and we were going to throw punches back. And we knew that this was going to be hard. And, we, you know, we, we talk about this, you know, hard is hard. We put ourselves in a position to understand that, bottom line, we were going to throw the last punch. And I'm, I'm, I'm just so proud. I'm so proud. So take me to the moment. Shea Knighton's up. Rachel Garcia throws a pitch. And Shea ties this yep. ball game. What yep. through, went through your mind in that moment? Uh, just, you know, those things. I, I've been here before where that's happened, you know. And I've told these girls stories of when these things have happened. It's the way the game happens. But I told Taylor Pack before that. She was so frustrated in her last at bat. And I was telling her, the game comes back around. I promise you, the game comes back around. And wanted her to separate her defense for her to lead off with the base hit. Those are the things that this game is all about. Just when you think you failed, you've got to keep your head in. You've got to keep on grinding. And it comes back around, you know. And, and I'm so proud of them because, you know, Kinsley Washington was so hot last night, didn't get the outcomes tonight. And she was up there with a smile when the umpire called a strike. And those are the things that I say, our sport is so challenging. There's such a mental toughness behind it, but you have to understand it's a game of failure and it's going to come back around. So, yeah, when the run scored, bottom line, pure joy. I'm just so proud. We threw the last punch tonight. When you say mental toughness, I think you've got to include Rachel Garcia in that discussion. How do you describe what she did for you in the well, circle I mean, and at the plate? I mean, she will go down as one of the greatest Bruins to ever play in the program. Her ability to impact on the uh, in, in the circle and at the plate, but her leadership as well. You know, her toughness and her ability to just get out there and continue to get after it. You didn't see her break down. You didn't see her quit. You don't see her do that. You see her continue to get tougher. And as a result, she led this team back back here to OKC, back to the championship, and just won a national championship for UCLA softball. She literally will go down as one of the best that's ever played. So proud. Thank you, Coach. Thank you.